Ladies and gentlemen. This evening, we celebrate the achievements of our teacher education students at this, the 29th teacher education convocation at the University of Iowa College of Education. My name is Greg Hammett, and I'll be your master of ceremonies this evening. Now, I'd like to introduce College of Education Dean Nicholas Colangelo, who will open the festivities by welcoming you to this evening's celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, Dean Nicholas Colangelo. I want to welcome everyone here. I know this evening is also very important to the families and friends who are here. I know in many ways we all feel that we're, we're graduating. Um, young people out here getting their certificates today, and I've got to stop now. You have no idea how handsome they look. Uh, there's something about getting your teaching certificate that just brings it all out, and you have every reason to be feeling good, looking good, and smiling because you are about to embark in one of America's great journeys, and that is becoming a teacher. You know, America's classrooms are still the crucible where we try to get it right. We have many differences in this room, but probably one thing we have in common is pretty much I bet we've all been to school. We all know that experience of what it means to have a teacher that took time with us. Every one of us can think about a teacher that really made a difference in our lives. And what we know about great teachers, they're not content-oriented in the sense it's only in math or it's only in social studies or art and science. They're everywhere. The other thing is some great teachers are really loud and in our face and they're funny. Others are really quiet, gentle. So all of these things are variables, but the one thing all great teachers have in common is that somehow or another they communicated to you that you were special, that they saw something in you that you didn't quite see in yourself. They had a confidence in you that you weren't ready, really to, ready to own up. And that's why we remember them. And now you're putting yourself in that situation. You also have a lot of reason to be proud to be graduating from the University of Iowa College of Education. We are by far the highest ranked college of education in the state of Iowa. And we take tremendous pride because every one of you will be representing us and we will be backing you. It was Pat Con Conray who said, when a young boy or girl points out to me and says, there goes my teacher, it makes my heart sore. Every one of you have put yourself in a position to have a child or to have a teenager point to you and say, hey, that's my teacher. May all your hearts soar. Thank you. Before I introduce today's keynote speaker, I want to acknowledge all the excellent faculty members who are here and representing also the faculty in the College of Education. They've been your teachers. They've been the ones that have helped you prepare for this. And I want to acknowledge them, every one of them. Thank you, faculty. Our keynote speaker tonight is Linda Baker. Linda received her bachelor's degree from the University of Iowa with a double major. It was English and secondary education. So if there's such a thing as she's part of our family, she is part of our family. Linda taught in Indianapolis Middle School, taught United Way agencies, did volunteering at Indiana University Medical Center. Currently, she's retired. She served on the University of Iowa Alumni Board and as of today, she will also be serving now on the National Advisory Committee for the College of Education. Linda has done extensive travel throughout the world in terms of peace initiatives, and she has been a tremendous supporter of the College of Education. I can honestly tell you, our college would not be what we are 
without the support of Linda Baker. She has made it possible for those in the teacher education program, if they wanted to do a practicum in another country, it is her scholarship aid that made that possible. She is also the founder of the Linda Baker iPad project because one of the things we want all of our students is to be prepared to be on top of it in terms of technology. She has supported the Teacher Leader Center, which gives you all those extra pluses. So it is very, very fitting that Linda is here as our keynote speaker. Her husband, Dale, is also here and it's wonderful to have you here. They actually met at the University of Iowa. Another reason to go to the University of Iowa because <laughs> the odds are in your favor you're going to meet your life partner. So there are many reasons why this is actually a homecoming for Linda Baker. But at the end of all this, what I want to tell you is she has the heart of a teacher, Linda Baker. Good evening. Welcome to President Mason, Dean Colangelo, faculty, students, parents. The parents look uh, very proud and very broke right now. <laughs> I was wondering what I would have to say at age 69 to all of you in your 20s that would be relevant. It made me think of an experience I had this fall when I partially tore my Achilles tendon. My daughter-in-law, Leslie, asked me how I did it, and I said, well, I was yelling at a woodpecker. I was standing in our doorway, and this woodpecker was pecking this huge hole in our house, and I was railing against the woodpecker, and I lost my balance. I fell sideways onto our stone fireplace hearth. The good news was that I landed in a basket of pine cones. The bad news was that I landed in a basket of pine cones. <laughs> and tore my Achilles tendon. So my daughter-in-law says to me, well, Linda, you gotta change your story. That's really boring. And I said, well, it may be boring, but you know, it's the truth. And she said, well, you live in Colorado. Say you were skiing a black diamond at Copper or you were climbing Pikes Peak. And I said, well, all of those would be way cooler than saying I was yelling at a woodpecker and fell in a basket of pine cones, but it wouldn't be the truth. Ah, uh, the truth. Then I knew what I wanted to talk to you about, and that was truth in teaching. Somewhere along the line, I heard the statement, there are three kinds of truth. What I think is true, what you think is true, and what really happened. We all have our own personal truths. They might be based on honesty, candor, certainty, context, trust. It's our own view of what is correct in the universe, what resonates with us as being true. Your first day of teaching, you will go up wrapped in your cloak of your personal truth. And you will have 20 or 25 little fresh face personal truths looking right back at you. Their truths would have been formed the same way yours were. Family, friends, media, perhaps church. Do not let your own personal truth stand in the way of your teaching. Your truth needs to enhance that of your students. The one thing I did not learn at Iowa was what to do on my first day of teaching. I had no clue. It was 1969, it was a middle school. So my first day I had 42 students in my homeroom. Those 42 students went on to become one of my language arts classes and I, I truly had no clue what to do. So I decided, well maybe I can get them to write the alphabet. Now I know that sounds really simplistic, but it was all I could think of to do. So all of a sudden a hand goes up and a young lady says, well, how many letters are there? And I said, 26, okay. A few minutes later, another hand goes up. It was a boy named Ronnie. And he says, Mrs. Baker, are you sure there's 26 letters? So Ronnie's personal truth was that he did not know 
the alphabet in seventh grade. My truth was a wrong assumption, and that was that he would know something like the alphabet. You need to remember to meet your students where they are, not where you think they are. In the 1970s, men were wa walking on the moon, and I thought, you know, I'm going to get a television. Our school was K through 8, and we had maybe three or four TVs. That was high tech back then. And I thought, I can jerry-rig this thing, and I can get outside channels, and we can sit here and watch men walk on the moon live. And I thought, this is going to be so awesome. So I get this TV, I get it all jerry-rigged up, and I turn on, and there were, men were walking live on the moon, and I'm so excited, and I look at my students, and some of them are watching, and some are doodling or reading or putting their heads down, and I'm thinking, my gosh, you know, what is going on here? It makes me think of that Chevy Chase movie, European Vacation, when he takes his kids to Paris. Look, kids, the Eiffel Tower, and I'm going, look, kids, men on the moon, and it didn't make any difference to so many of them. So I said, why are you not interested in this? And they said, well, Mrs. Baker, it's fake. It's not real. Our parents said it's all Hollywood. So my truth was, well, our government would never lie to us, right? <laughs> <laughs> Their truth was that it was fake. So we're going back to that same statement that I heard, my truth, your truth, and who knows what the real truth was. Do not assume that your truth is their truth. Do not assume that your students have had any food since they left school the day before. Their personal truth might be hunger. Do not assume that your students got hugs and kisses and a have a good day before they left home in the morning. They may not even have a home. Their personal truth might be neglect and poverty. Do not assume that you will always know if your students are living with abuse. Trust me, you may never realize it. Those students' personal truth might be fear and pain and shame. As a good teacher, you will recognize the truth of how each of your students could fail. As a great teacher, you will recognize the truth how how each of your students can succeed. Do not make assumptions, do not judge, and let your students know that, that your truth will enhance their truths. Dean Colangelo, my parents grew up in Chicago and both families were fairly poor. My mother was a first generation American. My father went to night school as an adult for 17 years. During that time, he was married, raising a family, working full-time, going to school, and taking care of older parents. When my dad finally completed his coursework, the university he went to, which was another Big Ten university in Illinois, <laughs> said to my dad, well, number one, you didn't live on campus at all, and the classes you took 17 years ago were not counting now. My dad never got a degree, but he got an education. There is a difference. My dad also felt he never wanted to be the richest man in the cemetery, and I took that to heart. So to honor my parents, Howard and Matilda Erke, who knew that the ultimate truth in life is education, my husband Dale and I would like to present the College of Education at the University of Iowa with the gift of one million dollars. <laughs>
And I would like to say to the students, good luck, join the Alumni Association, and go Hawks. That was completely a surprise. Um, I was going to say thank you for those most inspirational and useful thoughts, Linda. <laughs> On second thought, you know, thanks a million. <laughs> If you ever go to the alumni page and look up the Bakers, you'll find that not only do they meet at Iowa, and of course they went to school here, obviously, if they met at Iowa, uh, they're also huge Hawkeye fans, right? So we promise, because Steve Ferenc is standing back there, we promise that next year is going to be a good year for the football team. Okay? <laughs> right, Steve? Isn't that right? Oh, he's back there. The person who will introduce our faculty speaker this evening is one of today's teacher education celebrants and the person who nominated our faculty speaker for this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, here to introduce our faculty speaker is Mr. Philip Keitel. Thank you, Dr. Hammett. So I came here with note cards for this short 60 second speech that I'm going to give. And I saw uh, Dr. Levens in the uh, in the walkway there, and I thought to myself, there's no justice that can be written down prior to actually introducing somebody like her. Um, she helped me out at a time of very tough need in my uh, program, and without ever meeting me, dropped everything and did anything possible for me to succeed. And so, without further ado, I just want to say thank you very much, and Dr. Susan Legos Levens. How could you not do something for that fellow, huh? <laughs> what a guy, and what an act to follow. <laughs> oh. oh, sincerely, sincerely, thank you, Philip. Good afternoon, President Mason, Dean Colangelo, faculty and staff, families and friends, and our most honored students. No teachers, I get to say. What an honor for me to be given the opportunity to congratulate you all on behalf of our esteemed faculty. I'm so very proud to have served you and to have had the opportunity to speak as I'm retiring after 43 years in the field. While this is one of my first, or one of your first professional steps, it's one of my latter. My last lecture in the professor's world, or as I've referred to it, it's my swan song. Those who know me know that I am a storyteller. I love to read, to hear, to watch movies, which tell beautiful stories. I learn by listening and growing from the stories of others, like Phillips, and I teach by telling those stories. A lot of professors give talks titled The Last Lecture. Professors are asked to ruminate on what matters most to them. And while they speak, audiences can't help but mull the same question, what wisdom would we impart to the world if we knew it was our last chance? If we were to vanish tomorrow, what would we want to be our legacy? Now the swan song, on the other hand, refers to the most beautiful of birds, the swan, with its long graceful neck, silent through most of its life. It floats quietly on the water, unable to sing sweet songs like the other birds. But in ancient times, people believed that the swan was given a special gift um, at the end of its life. Socrates explained that the swan was singing because it was happy. It was going on to the Greek god Apollo, who was the god of poetry and song. The expression's long been one in the English language. It means the last work of a poet, a musician, or a writer. It means the final effort of a person. Someone's swan song usually is considered their finest work. Well, you can see where I'm leading. You students, in our professional lives here, you're the finest work. And you will help 
to develop and shape hundreds of students to come. You've been admitted to and completed, as Dr. Colangelo said, one of the finest, most competitive teacher preparation programs in the state of Iowa. And I even know, having reviewed the program as my responsibility, we're one of the most outstanding programs in the nation. Thanks to strong supporters like Linda Baker, and that was even before I knew, <laughs> you've not only been trained in the highest of content and methods in your field by your highly qualified faculty, but you've been professionally developed in the most innovative and compelling issues in our schools today by way of the Teacher Leader Certificate and the Teacher Leader Center. Today, you join the rest of us on this stage as an educator. By sitting here, you've met the standards outlined in your field, you understand the common core, and you've successfully completed your field experiences and your exit exams. I congratulate you on those accomplishments, and I encourage you to continue to grow and develop those. Follow the TLC professional development opportunities as a school faculty member and come back and share with us what you learn. Continue to lead and grow for yourself, but most importantly, we all know, for your students. So rather than tell you the lessons of life that I believe may be of value to you, I thought it might be more believable and credible to think back to myself, and I didn't even know that was gonna be there, but to that empty chair I wrote, <laughs> and what would I tell myself at my own convocation as a young woman of 22 becoming a teacher. What do I wish she had known? Well, I'd tell her, first of all, relax. I want her to know that it's a serious business, this business of teaching, but not to take herself too seriously. As my father would tell me numerous times, I would tell her to open her mind and close her mouth. I would tell her that she will make mistakes, but she will have her greatest lessons in those mistakes. And as a great line from the movie Benjamin Button, because I love movies, I would tell her to pay attention to the people who come for her, the people who will teach her and take her to places she never thought possible. They'll come to her as a little first grader who puts a smile on her face every morning as they hug her in passing in the hallway or as a profoundly multiply handicapped 16-year-old girl who communicates her feelings and needs without ever saying a word to her. They'll come as a grandmother devotedly raising her grandchildren with riches while living in subsidized housing. Or they'll come as a talented high school student whose language lies in the arts and not with a pen and a pencil. They'll come as a frustrated and overbooked college student whose lesson was finding balance and priorities. Or as the president of Maryland University, Baltimore County told her, one day he said, be careful, Susan, what you think, for your thoughts become your words. Be careful what you say, because your words become your actions. Be careful what you do, for your actions become your character. And be careful for your character, for your character becomes your destiny. I will end as I began, reminding you that I am a storyteller. I'll admit one of my guilty pleasures to you is watching Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> what about McDreamy, huh? He, he's, he died last week. Okay. But several years ago, did you know that? Several years ago, I believe it was actually four years ago, I saw an episode and I was so moved that I went onto the internet the next day and typed in scripts from Grey's Anatomy just in case I might have an opportunity like this one tonight. It was a class president brought into an emergency room following what was to be a fatal car accident for her. Knowing that she wasn't going to make her convocation, she asked if she might deliver her speech to those in the ER. So go back and imagine me as one of your classmates sitting there and ask to deliver a convocation speech and maybe try to hear Meredith's voice, okay? It's always there at the end of the show. Today, this, the day, today's the day my life begins. Today, I become a teacher, a citizen of the world. Today, I become a grown-up, 
Today I become accountable to someone other than myself and my parents. Accountable for more than my grades. Today I become accountable to the world, to the future, to all the possibilities that life has to offer. Starting today, my job is to show up wide-eyed and willing and ready for what I don't know and for anything, for everything. To take on life and teaching, to take on love and to take on the responsibility and possibility. Today, my friends, my professional life begins and I, for one, can't wait. Thank you, I couldn't be happier as to where my life took me as a teacher. I know each and every one of you are gonna be able to say the same. Congratulations, today you are joining the worthiest of all professions. Never forget that. Stay calm and go forward. Thank you. Thanks so much, Susie, for all you do and have done and for those precious remarks. Hello. <laughs> to introduce our student speaker is someone who was a classmate during the course of her undergraduate career. Ladies and gentlemen, here to introduce our student speaker is one of tonight's honorees, Bailey Gilbertson. It is with great pleasure I stand before you this evening to introduce your student speaker for the class of 2015 College of Education Convocation. This compassionate, loving, and hysterical individual sitting behind me is one of the most important gifts the University of Iowa has given me. From attending lectures, workshops, and preparing lesson plans, we took the steps to becoming educators together. Since day one, our mantra has been change the world because as educators, we strive to make a difference in each student's life. While she was out in the classroom changing the world for her students and making a difference, she also had a lasting effect on my life and I'm sure the lives of many others. Who knew knocking on her door freshman year at Slater Hall would lead to a lifelong friendship? I truly believe she'll make a difference in this world with her passion for education and her students. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce to you Miss Lindsay Winders. Good evening, class of 2015. Can you believe we're here? <laughs> Thank you, Miss Bailey Gilbertson. Made me tear up a little bit. Okay. Like most of you in the room, I have just had the pleasure of completing my student teaching experience, and I still can't believe I made it. Is there anybody else in the room that catches themselves still addressing groups of people as friends, boys and girls, or who claps three times in a row before they want to get the attention of the room in front of them? I'll refrain from doing so today. But there may even be a few of you that prepare quirky jokes in an effort to compete with the cell phones that they'll be finding in their classrooms here soon. Um, I'm sure I'm not alone in this, but even so, I would like to stand here today and courageous, courageously admit to my crazy teaching quirks that sometimes surface even outside of the classroom. On behalf of our dedicated, accomplished, and innovative faculty and staff, within the College of Education here at the University of Iowa, I would like to welcome you to the Spring 2000 Teacher Education Convocation Ceremony. What an honor it is to stand here today and congratulate the student members and their families on the accomplishments we have all made in such a short amount of time. Having survived, and yes, I mean survived, the praxis exams, numerous practicum experiences, essay writing, book reading, and challenging course loads, I think we all need to take a moment to feel proud to have made it here in one piece. In all honesty, today is a milestone for each of us. And to that we owe our deepest thanks to our loved ones, families, and to those of you that got us here along the way. Today, however, I would like to spend a few minutes together reflecting on the idea of courage and where courage comes from. It seems to me that when I tell others that I have chosen to pursue this specific 
career, they respond with, how courageous of you. Frequently, however, I find myself nodding my head in response to this intended compliment. Yet I'm also left feeling a little unsure of what is truly being implied by this statement here. I feel a sense of responsibility to understand this now rather than later in my profession. What is this idea of courage that they are talking about and how does it directly reflect the person I am today? When embarking on this journey of defining courage, I found that it was somewhat complicated to describe. In fact, it is initially easier to describe what courage is not. Courage is not a tangible object. I can't pull out a measuring stick and calculate its length or width in front of you today, nor can I pull out a scale and assign it a weight. It doesn't smell like roses, and it doesn't come in a polka-dotted pattern. Courage, instead, is a quality that I attest to each of us as having inside of us that is much greater than a textbook definition. It is said that in order to have courage, one must first overcome fear. So I ask myself and you today, what fears have you overcome on this journey of following the mission laid on your heart? Because as well, because as we all know, things that happen when we are taking risks simply do not happen when we are comfortable. As educators, we recognize this by taking daily leaps of faith and embarking on journeys into classrooms full of students we've never met, all in good hopes of what is to come. Former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt once stated, you gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you stop to look fear in the face. The danger lies in refusing to face the fear and not daring to come to grips with it. And this is powerful stuff, people. As future educators, we have to remind ourselves to plant our feet deep and firmly gaze back into the eyes of whatever our fears might be. We must recognize that every conscious act of courage encourages us to know ourselves a little bit better each and every day. Now the question I have for you today is this. How do we teach others to be courageous? I can't stand here in front of you and act like I have it all figured out because I simply do not. However, I can acknowledge that each of, a, each of us in this room has a special amount of courage inside of us, and we know this because we took a large leap of faith in choosing this profession to immerse ourselves in. So I leave you with this today. A reminder that you are courageous. You have been called to pursue a career in courage. Together, as future educators, we shall create courageous individuals out of the students that walk in and out of our classroom doors each and every day. Think about that for a moment and then ask yourself, what will you do to instill courage in your future classroom? Thank you. The, uh, the choice of all of our speakers is the responsibility of the student committee uh, with, that I work with. And, uh, and the student speaker is one that is solicited from the entire student body uh, going through student teaching during the semester. It's whittled down to three finalists, and all three finalists were absolutely outstanding. And I always tell the committee every semester, the toughest meeting we're going to have is going to be that last one when you have to decide on who do you want to represent you on that evening of the convocation. And it does take a long time before they finally decide, and they always ask, can we have two? Can we have three? No, you can only have one, so great job. To um, at this time, I'd like to call to the podium Dr. Nancy Languth. Dr. Languth will call forward our faculty to announce this semester's certification candidates. Ladies and gentlemen, soon to be Associate Dean, Dr. Nancy Languth. Thank you, Professor Hammett. 
At this time, members of the College of Education faculty will call the teacher education class of spring semester 2015 to the stage according to their respective program areas. First, elementary education program coordinator Renita Schmidt will introduce our elementary education certification nominees. Good afternoon. I'm so happy to introduce the candidates for elementary education. I want to ask you all if you'd please hold your applause until we're finished. We have quite a large number of elementary education graduates. And I just got to say, they're awesome. So you'll want to clap really loud at the end. <laughs> Tanner James Bloom. Emily Ann Chamberlain. Congratulations. Courtney Marie Christensen. Elizabeth Catherine Cowden. <laughs> Lindsay Nicole Curiel. Hey, Jeff, are you going to hug? You're going to shave my hand. Oh, okay. You want to hug? Because I get a hug. Jeffrey William Doe. I can't force them to hug me, you know? I know almost all of these guys, though, so it's really fun for me. <laughs> Stephanie Marie Dubinsky. <laughs> Matthew James Evans. Jenna Elizabeth Geib. Hi, Bailey. Okay, thank you. Bailey Joy Gilbertson. Amy Marie Hen. Ellie Nicole Huston. Caitlin Michelle Jacob. Hannah Elizabeth Johnson. Kristen Elizabeth Jorgensen. Carlene Christine Keeler. Stephanie Shannon Kleeman. Thank you. Great. Jenna Marie Call. Sorry. Sorry. Megan Marie 
Megan Grace Lathrop. How are you? Good to see you too. Thanks so much. Rachel Helene Lynch. Lauren Sarah McTagg. Courtney Marie Mega. Carla. <laughs> Carla Denise Montiel. Mia Christine Nelson. Danielle Marie Oaks. Catherine Margaret O'Connor. Chesley Aaron Osborne. Thank you. Megan Kathleen Penn. Okay, Sabrina, how are you? Thank you. Pino or Pino? Sabrina Marie Pino. Taylor Nicole Rashley. Natalie Elizabeth Rogalski. Here you guys are sitting together again. How are you? Thank you. Blake Robert Schneiden. Congratulations. Shailen Renee Stewart. Brittany. Thank you. Brittany Marie Thorson. Carrie Kathleen, sorry, Carrie Kathleen Tuval. Lindsay K. Winders. <laughs> Yasmin Zakor. Congratulations. Victoria Ann Zimmerman. That's it. Thank you. In secondary education, we now have the faculty and program coordinators summoning the certification nominees to the stage. For English education, Professor Bonnie Sunstein. Here are our English teachers. <laughs> Ashley Gent. Oh, Briggs, I'm sorry, Ashley. I <laughs> Ashley, I'm sorry. 
Katie Johnson. <laughs> Sorry. Kimberly Lynn Postin. Tasha Nicole Spratt. Our latest English teachers. <laughs> Foreign language education, Professor Leslie Schreier. Okay, in French. Benedict Anne Agustini Corbet. Great job, Chris. With an MAT in Chinese, ESL, and a veteran, Chris Thomas Dusick. Our language teachers. <laughs> Mathematics education, Professor Kong Mi Choi. Kenneth Edward Arvison. He also is endorsed in English as a second language endorsement. <laughs> Stephen Joseph Simaglia. Kelly Joy Fernbach. Hillary N. Hoffman. Alexandra Lee Jacobson. Disha Kale. Daniel John Saylor. Thank you. Lindsay Taylor Spadavecchio. Gregory William Witt. These are the future leaders of secondary math education. Music education, Professor Jeremy Monternock. We have one student representing music education tonight, Paul Joseph Upmeyer. Congratulations. Science education, Professor Ted Neal. We had science first on my list. Sorry about that. You are social studies indeed. <laughs> social studies education will be Professor Jason Harshman. Congratulations. Good luck 
Catherine Ann Brown. Amy Lynn Engelman. Madeline Ray Hemesath. Philip Henry Keitel. Angela Radovanovich, the Social Studies graduates. Science. <laughs> and now, science education with Professor Ted Neal. Christina Joy Akrazoglu. Her father is on staff and nobody up here knows how to say that name. <laughs> that is her father. <laughs> Olivia Lee Cotton. Robert William Crawford III. Ryan John Epperson. Oh no, these are all mine. Emily Claire Greenwald. <laughs> Ashley Lynn Hansen. Sally Melissa Kessler. Kristen Marie Cook. <laughs> Jacob Maxwell Kep Kopnik. <laughs> Don't repeat that. <laughs> Congratulations. Caroline Elizabeth Louise Cope. Michael Patrick McPartland. Marshall Stephen Molers. Kristen Emily One. Olivia Marie Simmons. And that is a long and strong group of science educators. Special Education, Professor Yuja Hua. Tabitha Jill Smith. Congratulations to our special education teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, I now call to the podium University President Sally Mason and College of Education Dean Nicholas Colangelo.
I ask that the University of Iowa candidates for certification to teacher element to teach in elementary and secondary education in the state of Iowa to please rise. President Mason, these candidates, as an integral part of their university experience, have completed the professional studies in the field of education. The State of Iowa Department of Education recognizes the professional goals of these men and women and has empowered the University of Iowa to recommend these individuals for the teaching certification appropriate to their course of study. Thank you, Dean Colangelo. The University of Iowa cooperates with the Iowa Department of Education in preparing men and women who will teach in elementary and secondary schools in our state, in our nation, and around the world. The university takes great pride in fulfilling its charter mission to educate outstanding teachers to our students who have chosen to enter the most noble profession of teaching and who have met the requirements set by the College of Education and the State of Iowa I recommend you, on behalf of the University of Iowa, to the Department of Education for certification as elementary and secondary teachers. My colleagues and I extend our heartiest congratulations. You did it. So many wonderful things to celebrate, and we also want to celebrate tonight the recognition of our president, Sally Mason. President Mason has been coming to this convocation, and her presence says clearly how important teacher, teacher education is to her. This will be her last convocation as president since she has indicated that she will no longer be serving president. She's going to be president emeritus in a very short time, but we wanted to take tonight President Mason to say thank you and on behalf of the College of Education and all these people going out, this is for you. Oh, thank you. And President Mason, we think of everything. So I know you have to go to the graduate college graduation, so our staff will bring that to your home after the evening's over. Okay, you can take it with you? Oh, good, take it to the graduate college. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as we conclude, I'd like to mention one omission in the program. I already mentioned it, sort of, which is uh, the name of an usher who volunteered tonight, and that is Stephen uh, Ferentz. I also want to thank University President Sally Mason, Dean Colangelo, Associate Dean Susan Lagos Leven, Dr. Levens, Dr. Nancy uh, Languth, and Dr. Renita Schmidt, as well as Ms. Linda Baker and Dale for their participation in this evening's convocation. Additionally, I'd like to thank Associate Dean David Bills and all our departmental executive officers in the College of Education for their support in making this event a success. Of course, without the planning of our student committee, and I kind of alluded to them earlier, this event would not be possible. I'd like to especially thank committee chair Tasha Spratt. Tasha, would you please stand? And, and would all the rest of the committee members please stand? All the rest of the committee members. These are the students who put this together. I'd also like to recognize the people behind me. This is for the third time you're getting recognized, by the way. My colleagues, our teacher education faculty, for without their caring efforts and professional guidance, this evening would certainly not be possible. So to our faculty.
There are several people I would like to especially recognize without whom this event could not go forward. They are the people behind the scenes who make this event happen through their planning and organization of all the convocation's logistics via their roles in the Office of Education Services. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to join me in acknowledging the indispensable work of the staff at the Office of Education Services, particularly Amy and Sue. Where are you? Oh, they're back there. Finally, and most of all, I'd like to thank you for coming to honor our teacher certification candidates this evening. We know that they have made us proud, and we stand secure in the knowledge that the future of our children and therefore our democracy is in their hands, the hands of caring, intelligent, reflective, and innovative professional educators. Now, as we conclude, I asked you to do one more thing in an email earlier this week. It's your last assignment you'll ever get from the University of Iowa, and the rest of this audience is going to help you. And so is the marching band, but on recording. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, please turn to the back of your programs. Please rise and join us in singing the University of Iowa alma mater. I think one of the best lines tonight was, 
take your job seriously, but don't take yourself seriously. We know how to do that in the College of Education. <laughs> Everybody, I want to welcome you to a reception just outside those doors in the new lobby by the old Bijou Theater. And we'll see you there. You can come up and take pictures with Herky if you wish. And all of you drive safely and have a great summer. Good night.